May the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and ever into the age of all ages. Amen. Today is the third Sunday of the Blessed Month of Tooth, and we were saying this uh, month theme has to do with the love of God the Father, um, and also a side or a additional part of the theme, the friend of tax collectors and sinners. So today we see the Lord saving and blessing and staying at the house of the tax collector, Zacchaeus. And next Sunday, we'll see the Lord um, healing and blessing and announcing also salvation and forgiveness to the repentant woman. <clears throat> and at the very end of the gospel of today, the Lord says today, actually before that, in the middle, he says today salvation has come to this house. And then at the end, um, St. Luke says, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So out of God's love for us, he brings salvation, mercy, and forgiveness uh, to us. <clears throat> and in a sense, the story of the gospel of today is a microcosm of God's dealing with mankind. And each one of us can find an, um, something to relate to when it comes to Zacchaeus. <clears throat> and anyone remember what city he was from? It's the verse, first verse. Jericho, right? We know the city of Jericho. It's the city of the Palms. Um, as it's mentioned in the Old Testament, and it was known for its very tall um, palm trees, both in the Old Testament and even until now, um, and especially known for the conquest um, of Joshua and the Israelites in um, in the book of, of Joshua and also in, this, in the Numbers. Um, and actually, when the walls and the city was destroyed, there was um, an announcement of the proclamation of the, the lack of blessing in the city. Um, <clears throat> and even Joshua said, cursed before the Lord is the one who undertakes to rebuild the city. But actually it was rebuilt later on um, in the times of the prophets. And it's likely that Elijah, Elijah the prophet um, uh, was taken up by the chariot of fire in this area and also where Elisha the prophet healed um, the, the water of the city. Um, anyway, just, just to talk about the, the, the importance of the location of the city because it was not necessarily a blessed place and, and for, for a lot of the time. It was actually one of the oldest cities in the ancient world. Um, <clears throat> but um, even in the New Testament times, um, King Herod built three palaces and died there. Um, but, and if you look at the Gospels, um, especially according to St. Luke, he talks about the city, the three different stories. And one of them is in the Good Samaritan passage where it says he entered and uh, he um, went down to Jericho. Why, why am I focusing on this? Because the elevation of the city was very low. It was below sea level. Right, um, about 850 feet or 25 feet below sea level. So it's one of the lowest elevations in the world, right? And Zacchaeus was low or short of stature. Right? These details are important to remind us of the lowliness of what happens to us when we are far from God. So his sh shortness of stature did not allow him to see, right? And the fathers of Saint Cyril says. This is not because of his shortness, but it's a, 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 a reflection of the spiritual state that his sins were uh, creating an obstacle for him to be with the Lord and to see the Lord. <clears throat> um, and so um, Zacchaeus was low to the ground. The city itself was under water, so to speak. Um, and it's the same similar circumstances if you read the story of Jonah the prophet, where he goes from one state, an elevation, to a lower, right? Um, <clears throat> and so sometimes in our life we feel this um, decrease or, or um, falling from a high state to a lower state. Um, even though, anyone know what the name Zacchaeus means? It actually means pure. So he was called to be pure, but he, he at uh, a certain point, a lot of his life before this uh, interaction with the Lord, um, he was far from God, 
right? He was very sinful. Not only did he have a job, so there were different types of tax collectors. There were some tax collectors that would take um, uh, from the foreigners, like St. Matthew or Levi. The, um, he, so they wouldn't tax their own people, they would tax the people coming in, which was still not, no one likes the tax collector, um, but that was more reputable than, than Zacchaeus, because Zacchaeus was taking from his own people directly. Um, and on top of that, he was head of, he was the boss of all the people um, who, who did the same, right? So he was not in a good spiritual state um, and even a social state. Um, and But despite this, he had the potential to be holy. So sometimes we focus on the fact that we're low and we're short and we're far from God. But what is your name? You're called to be holy. You're called to be pure. You're called to be the Lord. And the Lord overlooked temporarily all of these things because he saw what was good in him. That's why he came to him. And that's why he said, today I must stay at your house. Right. So sometimes we focus on the fact that we're short, that we're far, and that we can't see. Um, <clears throat> and we don't. But if we have this desire to see the Lord and to know, then he will come to us quickly and say, come down, I must say, at your house today. Um, <clears throat> and this is the beauty of, of, of the story of today. Um, and so um, despite our mistakes and our sins, God comes to us, right? And so this city of Jericho can be, in a sense, a symbol of the world, right? Because it said the Lord um, went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, as, as, sorry, as it says in the passage of the Samaritan, um, Good Samaritan, but also in, in the gospel of today, he entered and passed through. So the only way that God could come to us in the flesh is to take flesh, the incarnation, right? Um, and despite our lowliness, it becomes the city of the palms. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, as the psalm said. Um, <clears throat> and so Zacchaeus had a lot of very good qualities. And I think we need to learn um, some lessons um, from him um, and uh, the virtues that he had for, for, for what the Lord responded by um, loving him and accepting him and coming to him and bringing salvation. <clears throat> So I think the first thing was that Zacchaeus had a very clear goal, right? Um, not in his early life, but once probably he started hearing uh, th things about what the Lord Jesus Christ had did and said, um, and probably even the disciples as well. <clears throat> so uh, St. Luke just simply, he doesn't, uh, e even though he's very detailed uh, evangelist, he doesn't go into very much detail about what uh, happens in this story, as at least as much as I would like to hear. Right? But the good thing that St. Luke describes is that he says he sought or he wanted to see Jesus. Um, or other translations say um, for he wanted to see Jesus for who he was, which is actually probably more um, in-depth understanding of this. So he, he was very confident in his search for God. Um, and even like with the disciples, for example, when the Lord first called the disciples, um, the first two disciples in, in the gospel according to St. John chapter one, he asked them, what do you seek? What are you looking for? Right. And they said, oh, please, uh, we want to see where you're staying. Right. And, and, and they stay with him. Um, <clears throat> but he didn't ask. Sometimes the Lord wants us to go deeper in our understanding of why we want him. Um, I'm sure you remember um, in, in, in the, I believe it's the first Sunday of Amshir when, when we talk about the bread of life and uh, before we get to the passage of the Lord Jesus Christ um, uh, describing himself as the bread of life, a lot of events happened, right? Um, anyone know? John chapter 6. So before that, um, he, he, uh, he, he blesses the, the multitude, the five loaves and the two fish, right? Um, and then he goes to pray all night, um, and the disciples leave, 
uh, and, and he meets them across the way. Uh, but anyways, the, the people come to him the next Sunday saying, okay, where's our free lunch? We want, we, we want to see you again. We want the blessing again, right? So the Lord rebukes them because they're going to him for the wrong reason. And he's trying to patiently bring them from one step to another to understand the, the significance or the purpose or the main goal of, of him, of, of seeking him and his kingdom. And his and salvation that he offers, right? He didn't have to do this with Zacchaeus. This is what the the good uh, virtues. Zacchaeus already he already cut to the chase, and he saw the bottom line. He said, "I have to go. I have to see him." Um, <clears throat> and so, um, and and the Lord rebuked the, those people in, in the path, saying, "You seek me because you saw the sign, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled, right?" And as we know that in the the famous verse, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all of these things shall be added to you. Zacchaeus was already on that path, right? Um, <clears throat> and and uh, as St. Cyril says, he desired to see Jesus and climbed therefore into a sycamore tree, and so a seed of salvation sprang up within him. So meaning salvation comes from God, but just this desire to have him and to have salvation and to have the kingdom that's the seed that that needs to 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 be watered and to grow if i don't have that seed and there's no desire then no matter how many how much you water a, a patch of dirt it's not going to grow anything um so the lord plants the seed he's the good sower we'll talk about that later um in in another month but um i need to ask myself do, am I seeking the Lord? And if so, is it because of the things of the flesh or the things of the spirit? Um, and if, if I say both, then which one comes first? And am I willing to put aside the requests of the flesh and focus on the requests of the spirit? So this is how our, our prayers become transformed. And, and eventually our thoughts become transformed. And eventually our life becomes transformed. Um, <clears throat> so it has to do first and foremost with the clear goal. Um, and with that clear goal and priority, the second thing happens is the determination is connected to that directly, right? So Zacchaeus was a bit a man of extremes, which in this case is very good. Um, <clears throat> he, dis he was determined to go to any length to accomplish his goal, regardless of the cost. Um, and regardless of the indirect consequences, didn't matter. Um, what mattered was the goal, right? Um, <clears throat> he was short too many people around. Okay, I'm, I need to do something about it. I have to see him. I don't care. Um, you're going to climb a tree, ruin your clothes. It's, it's, it's not acceptable in any um, day or age or society for an adult to climb a tree, right? Um, he didn't care. Um, why? Because he was determined to have his goal set. I need to see him. I don't care, right? Sometimes we need to have a little bit of this uh, virtue. <clears throat> um, people don't like you, they're calling you a sinner. I don't need to defend myself, I just need to tell the Lord, look, I'm, I'm, I'm fixing my life. I don't care what the people think, I care what the Lord thinks. Um, <clears throat> I'll return everything I have and more, e e even if, if it makes me, uh, most likely, it not only made him broke, but it probably put him into debt. He didn't care. Um, uh, he said, I want to follow him. He's the source of all riches. As St. Paul says, um, although we're poor, we make many rich. Right? This is what he wanted. He felt the, the, the richness of the grace um, from the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> this man, most likely, in a lot of aspects of his life, he stuck out like a sore thumb. Um, similar to uh, the great saints and pro like John the Baptist, probably the same thing. Elijah the prophet, Probably the same thing, but it didn't matter. What 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 matters now is the greatness of, of the power of the spirit of these people. And so sometimes we need to put, or oftentimes we need to put aside how much we care about what other people think, about what this is going to mean, about um, whatever indirect consequences of growing in Christ, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be as significant as being one with him. Okay, as long as we're convinced 
and and um, God grants us the, the the clear message from Him, not just directly, but you know through the the spiritual guidance that we receive um, from all of you know Father Confession, spiritual guide. But it, it, as long as all of that um, is telling us the same message, we shouldn't care. Um, <clears throat> so this is uh, this is another virtue that he has is his determination to get his goal accomplished. The last thing is that if I have the goal and if I have the determination, then it's easy to unload or to sacrifice or to give up the things that are obstructing my vision from the Lord, right? Um, and, and this is the, the calling of the pure, or the holy. Um, the, actually, the readings of today are very clear um, ab about this. Um, uh, Saint <clears throat> Paul in his epistle uh, to the Corinthians, he says, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. This, this is my goal. This is my determination, right? Um, and then also in uh, Saint Peter's epistle today, um, he, he's, he says, he who called you is holy, so you also be holy in all your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy, right? So Zacchaeus probably realized this is my calling to renew my name, to renew my identity with him, to, to be pure and holy. Um, and what does that pure purity and holiness signify? Um, like the word agios in the Greek, in the Coptic, what does it mean? Anyone know? It means holy, but the literal translation, the, the A or the A means not, right? So it's a, a negative, right? And the Gios has to do with the things of the world. So basically, the holy person is not of the world. So the case when he climbed the tree, he was not of the world, right? Christ, when he um, ascended the cross, right? He, he sanctified the way to, to heaven, right? <clears throat> the person who is holy is separating themselves um, as the Lord says um, uh, in through the in the mouth of Saint Paul the Apostle you are the temple of the living God as God said I will dwell in them and walk among them I will be their God and they shall be my people therefore come out from among them and be separate that means the way you dress the way you act the way you speak the things you watch the friends you have the places you go is different it's okay to be different in this way because this means we're sanctified, we're set apart, we're holy. We're in the world, but not of the world. Um, <clears throat> and, and this word agios is mentioned maybe over 500 different times in, in the scripture, right? So the first step of being holy is consecrated, is being separated, right? Um, the first thing that we do in, in the divine liturgy um, before we, um, we take communion, right? We have to have the bread and the wine, right? And that's brought, right? But we have, as you see, multiple bread, right? But the one that we picked, what happens? It goes in there, right? It goes in the altar. It, it's separate, right? The rest are blessed, but not at the same level as the blessing of, of the Lamb, right? <clears throat> um, so that reminds us of what we need to be, right? We're in the same room, in the same um world as other people um but the christian is consecrated he's that or she is dedicated uh, for a special purpose and this is what the whole purpose of of the concept of purity is um and so we go about the world differently like let's say you were traveling to a country but you knew you're only going to stay for uh, one or two days um are you going to build a house there right are you going to uh, convert all of your life savings in, into that currency? Um, are, are you going to go, you know, start making friends, um, lifelong friends? No. Um, so sometimes we do the same thing and we don't realize the, the temporal nature of our life here. And yes, maybe 100, 120 years may seem like a long time, but it's nothing compared to eternity, right? And, and, uh, this is the, the idea of uh, unloading. I need to unload the extra things that are getting in my way. Um, <clears throat> and so um, the true interaction 
with the true God results in the true change of life. It's not always something that has to be calculated or planned. It oftentimes just happens. Um, uh, and Zacchaeus's mind was even like um, willing, okay, I'm going to give up everything. It doesn't, it doesn't matter at this point, right? Um, so what can I do? Each one of us has to ask, right? Um, what can I do to eliminate the obstacle um, in order to see him more clearly? What is my crowd, right? Um, <clears throat> and, and where is the place that I can go? Like the Lord, it says in the gospel, in the morning having risen a long while, um, before daylight he went out and departed into a solitary place. What is the solitary place that I can go to and be with my Lord? Um, and so we need to unburden and unload ourselves from these things that I can see him and hear his voice and follow his direction and become like him, become changed like him. Um, so whatever it is, like especially, usually there's, you know, for each person, there's there's a group of sins or usually it's one or two that are, are really like ingrained in, in the person and we're trying our best to, to remove ourselves. For, for Zacchaeus, it was this money, right? Uh, he was consumed with it um, to the point of, you know, becoming this chief tax collector. But once he met the Lord, what happened? Uh, it doesn't matter at all. I was wrong in my goal. I'm going to change my goal. Um, and he was very uh, willing to, to remove it far from him. Even if he was tempted later on, he probably couldn't have gone into the same lifestyle because he already took um, measures for it to be hard or almost impossible um, to return to the same life. So then we ask, if something is standing in your way spiritually, what will it take to remove? Um, and not maybe remove, remove tem tem temporarily, it might need to be permanently. Or what can what safeguards can you put in place so, to ensure that you don't return to the same place? Um, these are uh, some things that um, Zacchaeus was able to calculate this very quickly. Um, maybe because of uh, his his uh, job, um, but uh, th this is the zeal that, that uh, we all need uh, to follow. Uh, the, last, the last point is, well, what did he do uh, at the very end? He simply followed the Lord. He became a disciple. Uh, tradition says that he, he was a bishop in the place um, uh, of, the, of the city um, and um, his, his relics are found in a church in, in, in Jericho uh, today. But um, as Clement of Rome, St. Clement of Rome says, follow the saints because those who follow them will become saints, right? So this concept, I think, of discipleship is, is lacking more and more in the, in the society and even sometimes in the church today. But th this is the power that the church has, if, even if you r listen to the Synexarium uh, of, of today, um, the idea of the saint um, following the saint to become a saint. Um, and, and Zacchaeus knew that following Christ would change his, his life, right? This was the pearl of precious price for him, right? Same thing with the St. Matthew and the rest of the disciples. Um, <clears throat> so to, to conclude, in order for us to follow in the footsteps of Zacchaeus, we have to have first our, our goal clear, um, the kingdom of, of heaven, or I want to see and know and be with and be like Christ. And then um, secondly, we need to um, be determined to get that goal accomplished. And finally, to unload, um, to climb the sycamore tree and to leave all of the obstacles behind so we can keep that goal um, clear in, in our face. And not only when we climb the tree, he doesn't just see us but he calls us to be with him. He calls us to dine with him. He calls us to invite him into his home. Um, and he gives joy and salvation um, much more than we can expect. Um, and this is the grace and the love and the mercy of the Lord. Glory be to him now and to each one of us.